Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here from The Automator, and uh, earlier we talked with Descalada on his UIA viewer tool and, and the whole library, and yeah. I realized there was this, you know, the, the path thing that he had in there, similar to the ACC approach, but yeah. we didn't really have a good video demonstrating if you want to use the numbers. He was cautioning us, especially on a web page, I get it, much more that things might change, but we want to make a nice video here just to explain how you can what use... What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, how to use it and stuff, so... Right. All right, so let's let's see. How do you get the the UIA path? Well, so basically, what we're referring to here is that once you this this hierarchy that you have here has numbers attached to them, and what you can do to get them. Let me stop getting that. Is that after you connect to a an element, it could be the main element or it could be a specific element inside that. You can use a function here. Let's just message box it. Uh, dump all. And this allows me to get a list of everything I have. Let me also put it on the clipboard. Now, don't do a message box on this because <laughs> right. sometimes in certain applications, well, the list can be very yeah. big. You're right? pointing to all of Notepad, which is a tiny program, but it still has. Yeah. If it was, if it was, thousands. yeah. Right. But in this case, if I run this, I will get a message box like this. And the reason why I copied it to the clipboard is because in here it's difficult to read. But if I put it here, you might see right away certain numeric, numeric values. And those numeric values represent the hierarchy of those controls. So number one is the first control that was created. And below that control, there were some children created like this one, 1.1. That is a child, a child of that one. And that one has children as well. So you have these numeric values representing the uh, actual hierarchy of those numbers. And, and we could use those to find, in certain situations, I would use this path. That's the reason why we're talking about it. So basically, uh, let me see if I can find that situation in which if you are capturing something, let me see here. Let me see here at the top. I think, you know what, in a more complex program like this, that might happen more often. So what happens is there are some panels out here. Here we go. Huh. Okay. Ooh, don't go. Stay there. Right. So sometimes there are situations in which there are some certain elements that they do not have a name. Okay. So if you go to the name, they're empty. The automation ID is also empty. So you cannot identify the thing. And the control type is pain, which is very common inside this thing. So you cannot identify a specific item. In that particular situation, when you do not have a name, automation ID, and you cannot identify the thing, the path is your way to go because the path represents the position of that element in, in the program. So the second child, well, the fifth child of the second element is this one. And there will be no other. That's the only one that is going to be in that position. It was it was created at that time and in that position. So there will be no, you cannot have two elements in the same position. That's the reason why you would, might want to use the path. So now that you know that you can use the dump all for getting the elements, I, I can show you a trick. Sometimes you do not need to dump the whole thing from the whole program. Say, for example, that I want to maximize this, right? So I want to maximize Notepad. So while I'm starting to get the thing, I notice that I could get this element at the top, which is the title bar, right? If I can find the title bar, I could refer to the other items below it with the path, and it would be a shorter number. Let me show you. This is when I dumped everything from Notepad, right? But if I instead first find, I, I use the find first by and the control type 
is the title bar. That's the way how to find that. And I have it in the TV variable. Let's now, show them where the localized control type and title bar come from, because that's, you know, if yeah, sure. understand that it's not really helpful. There right. you go. Here it is. So basically, whenever you click on one of these elements, they can have names, they can have automation IDs, and they usually have a control type or localized control type. And that's the one that I'm searching for, localized control type. In this case, would be title bar, which is this one here. Now, after I get my title bar like that, because I know there's only one of those, I could dump all the children just, of, just from the title bar. So this would give me a smaller tree view, as you can see. But the numbers that you're getting here are relative to the title bar. So at this point, I can use number three here. Let me see. This is the maximize button. I could use number three only by itself to go ahead and click on it. So for example, I could just say, hey, uh, TB find by path three dot click. And that means inside the title bar, just find the third child and then go ahead and click on it. And if I run this, it should go ahead and maximize Notepad, as you can tell. So basically, because the third button for, for that was that particular uh, button. So that's how it works. And, uh, and this is the situation where I would use this, is when I, when I don't have a, an ident a way to identify uh, the, an element, a specific element. However, and this is where I still say is Ace, like, you know, that's because you understand all the other ways to do it. And, and I honestly, and I'm, and I'm not knocking you, but for most of us, that is just too much, you know, other information. Why, why would I learn all that other crap when I can have an easy way? So I hear what you're saying. That That's when you use it. But for us, I think for most people, look, if I can just, and, and I totally get the point, it's, it's very similar to the DOM, where if I can jump down to a given element, um, and use that as my rock point, and then, okay, I'm going to navigate from there, the chances of something changing greatly get reduced because you have a stepping point to jump to, right? Right. And you're like, okay, I want the first thing. Like, I'd be using this all the time. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with a lot of the other approaches. Not that they're not right. It's just this probably as long as, especially if you can find something that does have a name or an automation ID. Right. Like, it, it's going to be so, child, so, yeah, it, it would be yeah. so easy for you to right. do that. Right. Um, now, it may not be the most robust thing in the world as far as with giving the program to other people, but I can automate my program probably really well, um, at least with that instance of it while it's open. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And and, and again, these, uh, these positions for the controls would only change if the program was updated and they added or removed right. controls, which usually is not the case. It's very unlikely that a program... Yeah. modifies its user interface very and often. even if they do you go update it right it's right. not, that, it's not hard, that hard right but for a web page that's where we both agree like yeah it's much more likely something might change but if you can get an id or something and jump down to it it greatly it's the same thing as using the get elements by tag name and you look for every div you know and you're yeah, like it's the exactly. 387th div like that's yeah, exactly. like it changes yeah, so much come on but <laughs> if you can jump down to an id that's one above it or next to it and then you can say, hey, it's the one right after this. Or I think you were telling me you can do like a minus as well or something. Right. That is correct. So here I could use minus one to find the first child of this and get it, get the previous one. So I could use minus. I could use uh, a normal like notation 1.1 and stuff like that. The only uh -huh. thing is that um, for now, just go ahead with and use the basic one until you understand it right yeah and then later on then just jump into getting the parent or getting a sibling or doing those kind of things yeah and the other ways where we've covered in videos the, that are much more robust i'm not knocking them i'm just saying for the most people like that also don't want to spend hours automating the program this to me is very low hanging fruit man i can i can do this very quickly yeah, that is right. And and you see the example that you just said, like, if you have 300 divs, 
and you just jump to an ID and just get the one that is right next to it. That's exactly what I did right. here. Right. I first got one that had an ID or something that I could identify. And after I got that, then I would just use positions for the ones that I couldn't identify. That's all. Yeah. And and you and I forget what we were working on a few months ago or so when we were looking at this. There was one, and it, let's say it said like localized control type equals name or something. We're like, well, there's like five names. Like it was over and over. We're like, that's not unique. We need something that's... Right. Exactly the... Um, the situation that I described when you have like a lot of panels and this type of thing, right? You have this pain kind of thing that is very yeah. often like With pain and ribbon, also like right, like it's the same, that. right? Yeah. Like what the heck? You cannot. So I don't want to grab this one, right? So so that's the problem. That's the situation when you would say, hey, instead of grabbing that one here and having to dig down. Let's grab, you know, this guy, which yeah. is the one that has a name, lower ribbon. And then after I got that, then I just concentrate on these guys that are below. So how would I correct me if I'm wrong? Because with the um oh, what is it in the web scraping uh and the query selector all, you can nest them. Can you yeah. can you put this and then this to help say there's a parent, you know, a parent named this with the child named home? Can you can you put more than one at one time in this? When you're saying with the find by, so, yeah. So, so the find by, you could say um, find first by not not for children. This always matches the one the one element. It doesn't match. Well, could I use it again? Then could I use the find first by to get right? So um, so now that I have the title bar in well, the title, I, I could use the find first by name. Well, can you throw it right onto the end of it though, and just do another dot find first by after? Like well, I would assume so, okay. because that is another... Right. right, it's still just going down the path, right? So um, First, the dot notation path. That uh, is. Right, exactly. I would assume that yeah. I could just now say name equals maximize, right? So that should... I, I could get rid of this, right? I would assume that well, I could... Or that. throw the click on the end of it, right? Um, yeah, definitely. So I could just make a one-liner like this. Right. Right. I could try that. Let me see something. Is it maximized? No. Let me stop this guy here. Would that work? See? Yeah, it works just fine. Okay, awesome. Right. So it basically, is, of this course, this is making sense to me. Yeah. Right, right. Is that yeah, it's no longer voodoo. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but 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 in the first in in one of the expressions, you cannot refer to children there. You're referring to one object. Okay. And then after yeah. you get it, then you can perform another search, which is uh, sometimes it's annoying, but oh, I to me, yeah, I I get your point because with when you're used to the query selector all, how you can nest it with right exactly and, and and thing, how how I did in, in CSS that you can say yeah. title bar and then and then you say you know yeah, right. maximize yeah, yeah. that's and great path, because, uh, yeah. yeah exactly it is doing the two find first by in right. one line like this you know yeah but i i don't mind right. yeah right. it's yeah. because it's still so it's so clear to me yeah, it's just like it i jump to here and i'll go one more level with this other thing and right. now then get the use the dump all on that if you need to see the actual id unless that actually has because at that point you might be able to list the actual name of the thing and not even use the path, right? Because that's right. Because uh, it's when you start having a trail like that. Because what are the odds something else is going to have that same hierarchy, no, right? Of, else of those have three or four things in a row, it really helps narrow it down. That is right. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. That was. I'd still say go go watch other videos. There are more robust ways, but this to me gives you very simple, easy w approaches. Again, I probably. I would consider it on a simple web page, you know, but um, I, I'm much more likely to do this on, on programs, you know, that don't change so much. That's right. Thank you, man. Cheers. Bye.